Prime Minister. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Hello. What is this? This is the This is the biggest synagogue in Europe. Prime Minister Orban and Mrs. Orban, distinguished uh, rabbis, president, the mayor of Budapest and the mother, <laughs> and all our ambassador uh, and all the uh, uh, distinguished people who came here tonight. First of all, I want to thank you. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister for the, and your wife for the warm welcome to my wife and me and our delegation uh, and the ability to uh, close a historic circle that has been waiting for too long. Uh, here in uh, 1860, the rebirth of the Jewish people began with the birth, not very far from here, of our modern Moses. Theodor Herzl. He was um, a genius, but it wasn't merely his intellect and his capacity for analytic prophecy. It was his spirit, his soul. When he saw in his mind's eye the anti-Semitic fire that could consume European Jewry, he could have escaped or he could have just gone to his grave without doing anything. But he performed the most miraculous transformation in the history of nations. He brought a people seemingly dead back to life. And he said the solution to the problem, the Jewish problem as they called it, is to have a Jewish state. He found a partner here in this city. Herzl is well known, Max Nordahl is less well known, but he was much more well known than Herzl in the 1890s. He was the preeminent, one of the two, three preeminent intellectuals of uh, the Belle Epoque, another genius. These two genius Jews of Hungary formed a partnership that launched modern Zionism and is the reason why I stand before you today as the Prime Minister of the one and only Jewish state, the sovereign state of Israel. It is because of Theodor Herzl and Max Nordau of Budapest. With the birth of Zionism also came the great destruction that Herzl saw, the destruction of uh, not merely the physical destruction of synagogues and everything that was Jewish. Prime Minister, I want to thank you. We just went through a magnificent synagogue. I saw this unbelievable synagogue. Uh, but I know that you restored a synagogue of the Jews of Serbia and another country, Hungarian Jews, and I believe it's going to be opened in the, 
October, and we will send a representative uh, to this uh, event. But this also commemorates the great destruction uh, that consumed exactly as Herzl foresaw uh, the Jews of Europe. And he said, uh, he said, 50 years before the State of Israel was born, it may not come in my lifetime, but 50 years from now, there will be a Jewish state. And he was right. He envisioned what that Jewish state would be like. He said, not everything, I cannot, I'll find you one or two things that were not prophesied by him. For example, the language, he thought we'd speak German. He didn't hit the mark on that one. We recovered and rebuilt an ancient language, 3,000 years old. Our son, who was the Bible champion of Israel at the age of 15, could read the Dead Sea Scrolls, the book of Isaiah, when he was seven years old, exactly as it was found. And so we took this language that we kept, and we had to transform it to cybersecurity and to automotive technology and to uh, milk production and to everything. But we did it. As Herzl said, this will be, he said, in the East, in the vanguard of the East, amid the despotisms, there will be this sparkling jewel of science, of technology, of progress. He envisioned all this. And guess what? He said there will be a Jewish state in 50 years. He said that this would be a great fountain of human wisdom, and it happened. Now we're back here. The first time that a sitting Israeli prime minister comes to visit Hungary, unbelievable. Well, there's only one first time. <laughs> After that, there'll be a second time and a third time, and many more such visits. And the first time that I've had the privilege of uh, meeting with the Visegrad group and the next time will be as a group in Israel. We always say next year in Jerusalem. I say next year in Jerusalem, Vishigrad in Jerusalem. And this is, a, this is a significant event because it means that Israel is assuming its rightful place among the nations. It means that the Jewish people are assuming their rightful place among the nations. There is a resistance to that. Yes, there are anti-Semitic movements still abounding. And uh, some of it is traditional anti-Semitism, and some of it is the new uh, amalgamation of anarchist left anti-Semitism that joins hands with radical Islam. Unbelievable. They should be opposite each other, but they unite in the hatred of the Jews. And I came here from Paris, where I met uh, the French president, uh, uh, Emmanuel Macron, by the way, when I left him, I said, uh, do you know what Emmanuel means? And he said, God is with us. I said, well, God be with you. Emmanuel Macron said this. He said that anti-Zionism is a form of anti-Semitism. You cannot say, I don't have any problem with Jews. I just don't think there should be a Jewish state. I'm not anti-American. I have no problem with Americans. I just don't think there should be an America. So obviously, he was hitting here on a real thing. And there are, there is this camouflaged anti-Semitism that is directed at the rebirth of the Jewish people, this great achievement that was begun by Herzl and continued by us. And I think it's very important that countries stand against this delegitimization of Israel, which is the delegitimization of the Jewish people. And I thank you, Prime Minister Orban, for standing up for Israel in these forums against this new form of uh, anti-Jewish uh, agitation. You spoke yesterday very strongly against anti-Semitism in, in uh, Hungary. You spoke about it in its uh, current forms, and you spoke about it also in its previous forms. The sins, as you said, performed by uh, previous governments, you were very open about it, including in our conversation. I think this is important. I think this is something that the world has heard, and it's very clear to me that this is uh, something that the world should hear continuously. Uh, I believe that uh, we have a golden opportunity. 
I think that uh, the Jewish people are blessed with great ingenuity. Other peoples have it too, but our survival depends on it. And therefore, we've made it a passion. We are uh, helping so many countries, countries in Africa, where I've made my second visit in a year and soon the third visit in one year. And African countries are coming to Israel, as is uh, our other countries, big countries, some very big countries. We were recently in China, and uh, the president of China said to me, well, we're just about to cross 1.4 billion. And I said, we just crossed 8 million. He said, but you are an innovation superpower. And there's some truth to that. But this innovation is a need for our life, but I think it also reflects our character. When I met African leaders in an exhibit of Israel technology in the UN, they asked, this, they asked me, one of them came to me and said, what is your secret? What is this secret of Israel? Because, you know, we have all the problems and you have all the solutions. What is your secret? And I said to him, the Jewish people are like a special kind of tree. We have deep roots in our traditions, in our memory, in our history, in our land. But we grow branches up towards the sky. We ask questions. We bring answers. And we keep asking again and answering again. This is a tree with ancient roots and branches for the future. It's a special combination. I don't believe that we would achieve our rebirth if we didn't have both. The memory of ancient times and the hope for better times. And it's a special combination that now unites us with so many other countries, including here in Visegrad, with Hungary, and with others who wish to have a better future. We are proud of our past. We are eager to seize the future together. We shall do so in great friendship, friendship between the state of Hungary and the state of Israel, friendship between the Hungarian people and the Jewish people. And I see this visit here, this meeting here, next to this synagogue is a testament to this friendship. Thank you very, very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Shalom Yerushalayim. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, We are standing now in the place of the building. Exactly here was the building. The building of his house. Of, yeah, of the the house of the he was house. born. He was born he was here. Born. He was raised here. And he attended the service in the Doha Street synagogue. Really? When he was well, a kid. And he had the bar mitzvah. Here. Yeah, 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 here. Yeah, in the yeah. Street. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 1860, נולד העם היהודי מחדש, כי כאן נולד המושיע המודרני שלנו, בנימין זאב הרצל, תיאודור הרצל. פה, מאחוריי, הוא הלך לבית הכנסת, וכאן הוא חגג את הבר מצווה שלו. הרצל ראה את השואה, וראה גם את התקומה. ואנחנו נמצאים כאן היום, ואני עומד כאן, ראש ממשלת ישראל בהונגריה, שבה היהודים סבלו כל כך, ומדינת ישראל קמה מחדש לחיים, והיא משגשגת כאומה בין האומות בגלל הרצל, בגלל האיש הזה, המופלא הזה, שהראה לנו את הדרך מעבדות לחירות, ואמר אם תרצו אין זו אגדה. רצינו. והוא הפך לאגדה. 